I want to segue into what I'm going to refer to as my big idea this week, which is that success, that success is a poor teacher, but failure is a master. And as I was cogitating on this particular presentation today, um, I, I had a, a, a thought that kept intruding into my mind. And it was, it was not such a, so much a thought as a story. And, and so uh, I want to share that story with you. And, and I'm going to explain why I think it kept intruding into my thoughts as I was uh, cogitating on this idea of success being a poor teacher and failure being a master. Um, the story goes like this. A, a man is seeking enlightenment, and he goes to a Zen master for guidance. And instead of answering the man's questions directly, the master takes him to a nearby river. And without warning, the master grabs his head and plunges his head under the water, holding them there while the man struggles desperately to free himself. And just when he feels he might drown, the master releases and pulls his head back up. The man gasps for air and, and the master asks him a very simple question. He says, what is it that you desired most when you were under the water? And the man haltingly replies, I wanted nothing more than to breathe. And the master then tells him, when you desire enlightenment, this is the whole thing about Zen, with the same intensity and urgency that you desired air, then you will find it. And again, this is kind of, to me, like an intrusive thought. Why am I thinking, you know, why is this story coming to mind? And, and, and the thing that kind of pulled it together for me is, is some of you might remember um, Alexander Frumpkin, Sasha. He was a guest a few weeks back. And during the, the time that we spoke, um, and I think it's on the uh, on the, the recording, um, he said, I asked him, I said, what's the, the biggest thing that we have to kind of overcome or know to, to be successful in an agile transformation? And I remember his answer because I think it was it was it was something that kind of stuck with me because I think it, in its simplicity, I think it was it was very helpful to me. And he said that thing that we need the most is urgency. And, and I think that's why I remembered this story. I, I remembered that the fact that if we want to be successful in transforming our companies, if we want to be successful in transforming ourselves, we need a sense of urgency. So that's why I wanted to bring that story and talk a little bit about that story. Because the one thing that I've found in my practice, and I've had these discussions from time to time with other agile coaches. And, and I think for the most part, I, I've gotten some at least consensus, if not agreement. Um, and, and I think particularly um, many, many conversations I had with Fred Fowler. I don't know if you're all familiar with Fred, but he, but he was pretty uh, active in the world of agile here in, in uh, Silicon Valley, where I live. Um, and a good friend of mine, and, and we used to talk about those things a lot. Um, success tends to create a complacency. And that's why it's not a really good teacher. And when I think about how success has created complacency, I think about examples that you all can rely, you know, that, that, that you can relate to. And one of the ones that comes to mind is, is Kodak. Kodak had the technology for digital images. And, and they sat on it, it didn't work. Um, other examples, Sears, Blockbuster, Nokia. These were very successful companies, but their success led to a certain complacency. And because of that complacency, they weren't able to necessarily learn the things that they needed to learn in order to be successful. Um, and, and I'm gonna say in this book of world, because I think that's important. And so we know that these are quote unquote failures where success has not been a good teacher and, and we haven't learned the lessons that we want. Um, the interesting thing about quote unquote failure is that failure can create what uh, Sasha talked to us about, which is urgency, right? It, it doesn't create complacency, it, cr it creates urgency and it also creates focus which is really, really important. And it has that intensity to it because we're, we're saving the company. And there are certainly a, a lot of examples that we can, we can look at in, in the world of business where this is actually true. 
where companies have not been doing well and they've taken it more or less as, uh, for lack of a better word, a wake up call. Um, I think about Apple before Steve Jobs re-entered Apple, if you don't know the story, right? They're, I think they're the second most highly capitalized company in the history of the world now. Uh, at one time, they were the, the most highly capitalized company in the history of the world. But prior to Steve Jobs coming back to Apple, they were almost in bankruptcy. It took, uh, it, it took Bill Gates and Microsoft actually to save, help save Apple so that it could become this behemoth that, that we're all familiar with now. Um, it's not the only example. Uh, Netflix had the pivot because what they were doing uh, wasn't necessarily working. In fact, uh, I think it was just last week or two, they, they, they're done with the, um, uh, officially announced that they're done with sending out the disc. Maybe it would happen sooner, but anyway, Netflix pivoted. They had to pivot and, and they created streaming services. Obviously everybody knows Microsoft. Um, they have done some really interesting things lately to, to pivot and learn from what might have been a complacency problem. Um, Samsung, um, there's there's numerous examples. In fact, the, the interesting thing about failure and how it teaches people is there's another kind of intruding thought that, that comes to me when I think about this concept. And, and, and that is the, the idea of the 12 step program. Now, some of you may or may not be familiar with the 12 step program. It's something that is uh, people use for chemical dependency, alcohol dependency. Um, and the interesting thing about the 12, and I've often compared, and I think there's a blog post from, from you know, eight, nine years ago, where I compared agile transformations to the kind of this concept of, of a 12-step program. The first step in the 12-step program is to admit that we have a problem. And I think that's a problem when you're successful. Right. You say everything's going fine. So I don't have any problems. I don't have any issues. You're not looking for things, obviously, to be wrong, um, even though they might be, because the, the, the issue with the VUCA world is, is it's volatile. It's changing all the time and it's uncertain. We don't know where we're going to be in the future. Right. So so we need to always be on guard for that. So um, the first step of the 12 step program, admit that there's a problem. Right. When we know we have a problem, it can lead to a sense of urgency. I want to leave you as I, I look at the time and, and want to make sure that Erica has her time. I'm going to bring her out here uh, momentarily. One of the examples from the agile world I want to bring to you, though, you know, some of you may know some other ones. The one that always comes to mind to me, excuse me, is the Sentinel Project, which was initi uh, initiated by the, the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, where they wanted to develop a new electronic case management system. And this was initiated to replace an older system, which really didn't do a good job either. And so the Sentinel pro uh, project initially followed a traditional waterfall development approach. They went with some, some big vendors, right? You've seen this story before. They went with some big vendors. I'm not going to call them out here. Um, but those vendors didn't do a very good job. They, there was significant delays, budget overruns, scope tr creep, et cetera. And, and the project was, was basically a failure. And it was in response to this that the FBI decided to shift to Agile as, as a way of attacking this problem, which is, again, a, a VUCA problem. And this is really revolutionary. And, and I don't think they would have made this decision if it hadn't been for the previous failure, failure of, of the, the virtual case file system, BCS system, and the impending failure of the new Sentinel project. I don't think they would have done it. If they had been successful or, or uh, somewhat successful, they wouldn't have done it. But they did something that is really unheard of in government, and they did it with agility and they were able to actually do a really, really good job of completing this project. So as I wrap up here, I want to caution us about what I refer to as soft success. We need to understand that in the VUCA world, because it's volatile, anything can happen. We can get in trouble when we get complacent. So I ask folks, don't be complacent. Don't make too many assumptions. Always question and always understand and look for potential failure. Um, as my friend Kyle says, and, and I've parroted many times, I did a show on this one. So sometimes it helps if we assume we're wrong. 
because then we're going to look for the things that will help us to be right. So again, success is not always the best teacher. So don't treat failure as if it's permanent. Use it as a way of instructing yourself because sometimes out of failure, uh, the phoenix rises from the ashes, et cetera, et cetera.